Okay, I wanted to talk very briefly about this model before I actually post a video of its deformation. Uh, this is another model that's using glass spheres, sandblasting beads, uh, to represent decomont surfaces within the stratigraphy. Uh, this model has produced a very interesting feature that you don't actually even need to see the deformation to interpret. And that is this little patch of cream colored layering and blue layering that's within the core of this very obvious syncline. Uh, syncline should young towards their middle, they should young upwards toward the core of the structure. This syncline does follow that rule, younging towards the core, until you get to that cream colored and blue colored zone. Uh, that's older material. You have a nice intact stratigraphic section over here to tell you that as we move upward stratigraphically, cream, blue, cream, and then once you get into the pink and blue, you're never going to see any of these brittle cream colored layers again. So, the fact that they occupy the core of this syncline doesn't make a whole lot of sense, at least stratigraphically. So they cannot be in a stratigraphic contact with the pink and blue sand layers below them. What's the nature of that contact? It's actually a fault contact, and this is a, a true clippa. This is actually the last remnant of the very base of a thrust sheet that once arched up and over and then was compressed back down prior to arching up again where you now see that thrust and outcrop further into, a, into the foreland. And the deformation of that large thrust sheet, uh, sort of pressing the base of it down as further towards the hinterland, the, the, the plane of the thrust arched upward above these horses that are producing this sort of antiformal stack, that deformation of the thrust plane is what allows it to have structural relief that will produce window and clippa structures with deeper erosion into the wedge. And if you were to see this in the field, it would be apparent to you because you would be able to see the younging of the syncline towards its core. Suddenly that, that age relationship would be violated when you reach this older and deeper material within the core of the syncline. You could probably see a brecciated zone, a fault trace surrounding it. And it's possible that there might be a very distinct metamorphic boundary between the material of the clipping, or the clipper, excuse me, and the rest of the syncline. This might be schist and nice, surrounded by uh, much lower grade rocks, uh, sort of slaty rocks that are just beginning to undergo mica recrystallization. And that metamorphic boundary would tell you that this material that, I, that represents the clipper is older and it has been transported from much deeper in the crust, very far away, thrust over the younger strata, and then after that thrust emplacement, the entire thrust plane has been deformed by the duplexing like you, uh, like you see here. So, based on age relationships alone that you can infer from this conveniently still intact stratigraphic section, you know that something's wrong here. This syncline does not have appropriate age relationships. So, being able to interpret that and identify this material right in the core uh, as a lochthanus and having been thrust into place is key to interpreting this model and knowing that you have deformation of thrust planes within it. And that's something again that you can see just from outcrop alone. That's something that's very well known in compressional origins and although this would be occurring of course at the very large scale where this model uh, a real zone of deformed crust, you would be able to see thrust contact and probably compare and particularly contrast the material in the very core of the syncline with the material surrounding it and determine that this is in fact a structural contact, it's a clippa, and there has to have been folding of what was initially uh, a planar, very shallow dipping fault to produce the relationships that, uh, that we see here in this model. So check that out, see if you can convince yourself that indeed that material does not belong in the core of the syncline. It has to have been thrust into place prior to deformation of that thrust plane. And when I get the video of the actual deformation fired up, uh, you'll be able to, uh, to sort of see this happening. What you're seeing against the, uh, the side wall here is not exactly identical to what's going on a couple centimeters within the model, but it's pretty close and you'll be able to visualize some of that thrust deforming process that permits this structural relationship to form with, with erosion of the wedge. All right, so keep an eye out for that video. Should be coming up shortly.